I'm so excited about this. This is a tough decision to make, but I think we need to beeline back for the port. The wind's a blowing. This is a very special occasion because- Did we tell you guys we're having lobster for dinner? <laughs> we're Brittany and Drew, and this is our home spirit, who has been transporting us all summer to some of the most incredible sites and national parks that the Midwest has to offer. But alas, this will be our final voyage before setting sail for international waters. But will we make it? Subscribe and join us for today's harrowing journey into Voyager's National Park and beyond. But first, let's take in a deep breath and let it out. And now, it's time to enjoy the show. We got our mosquito nets up because they are a real problem these days. And here we are. Whoa, must be rush hour. We're all heading out for the day. This morning we're waking up in this beautiful park very close to Voyager's National Park where Drew and I are preparing to go today for a canoe camping trip. So right now we have all of our stuff spread out everywhere. Let's see how Mr. Adventure is doing with gathering all of our supplies. Very excited for this one. Looks like he's already been in the back. How's it going in here? Oh, don't look. It's a beautiful disaster. It doesn't look too bad. You got a lot of stuff in bags already. The exciting part about this adventure is that we don't have to carry everything on our backs. So we can bring a little bit more gear and maybe even our grill for dinner. I don't think a strap going over this would do too well right now. It still looks a little weird. Little raw. Why is it so yellow? <laughs> We've had somebody look at it. It's nothing to be concerned about, but it's still weird looking. We do have a huge trip coming up though, so that's gonna have to heal because you will definitely be wearing a backpack. We gotta get ready for this trip. Uh, <laughs> this view is wonderful. Minnesota, the land of 10,000 lakes. Is that really what it is? You know about the Lando Lakes? Lando Lakes butter. You got it. And today we're going to the heart of all the lakes, known for the French voyageurs. I don't think I'm saying that properly, but I gave it my best shot. Les voyageurs. Bags are packed. We got our waterproof camera gear ready. Our captain's eating his breakfast. I actually think he's double checking on the weather and we are ready to hit the road. I have seen you here before. Looking at me now from the corner of your eye. Someday I will see more than just your beauty. Beep beep for another national park. Looks like there's 60% chance of rain tomorrow. Not sure how that's gonna turn out. Just gotta hope for the best. We have a huge glob of weather coming our way. There's Lake Cabotogama. Oh, and here's the visitor center. We're here and we're gonna be camping somewhere over here, I think. Yep, all the way up in this little nook. We're gonna drive around to Arrowhead Lodge where we're running the canoe from and we'll have almost six miles to paddle from there to there. I'm not sure how long it takes to paddle six miles, but... That's kind of the mysterious question. It could be windy, could be choppy. My thought is that you canoe faster, a little bit faster than we hike, so maybe like three to four miles per hour. We'll just have to see. <laughs> oh babe, look what we got. I love that we can watch a film about the national parks back in the visitor center. We went to so many visitor centers last year and they were all shut down. And so now I feel like I'm so prepared with a lot of knowledge about the Voyagers, about the national park. Let's get out there. I loved learning about the Ojibwa Native Americans and the European fur traders. Although I am really glad to hear that this is now a sanctuary for beavers. Yeah. Those guys were incredible outdoorsmen. The park is named after the voyagers, robust French-Canadian canoemen who were hired to carry tons of fur and trade goods between Canada's wild northwest and Montreal. 
they would go about 70 miles of yeah. canoeing in a day. Yeah, or 3,000 miles a year. Here I am a little bit stressed about how long it's going to take us to do six miles. <laughs> We do have an overnight permit for a camp spot on the lake, and we're going to have to do some canoeing there. It's time for us to jumpstart this adventure. Let's jumpstart it. This right here is a TA Apex jump starter. Usually jump starting cables stress me out. They're like rusty and all over the place and hard to manage. But this is the sleekest design I have ever seen. Look at how gorgeous. Wow. It's got tail lights, blinking lights, and SOS lights. There's a spot right here to charge it by USB-C or USB cords. They're also included. These right here plug in nice and simply. It's four simple steps. You put your clamps onto your battery, you turn on the power of the device, you hold it for two seconds so it juices it up, and you turn the key in your vehicle. I also want to add this compact little unit here. It holds 20,000 milliamps. That's a lot. Whoa. It'll power a gasoline car that's up to eight liters or a vehicle that's diesel up to six and a half liters. Anybody who uses a vehicle with a battery would be smart to have one of these. Be sure to use our link and code below for 10% off. We found a water spout. Perfect timing because the spirit is completely empty. Ooh, it's nice and cold. Wanna put them down so you can help me? So as part of the planning process, I found out that the National Park doesn't rent canoes for the camp spot that we reserved from them from recreation.gov. So we had to go to a lodge called Arrowhead Lodge, which is just up the lake here. And that's where we'll be picking up our canoe, throwing our bags in, and we'll be our very own voyagers. Look at that van. Four mountain bikes on the back. Wow. I'm so excited about this. Babe. What? You want to see our boat before we get all our gear in it? Does it look like a voyageur? Yes. <laughs> a wee. Whoa. Can you just see us now singing along as we get paddling and... <laughs> Have you ever heard the wolf cry to the newborn moon? This is really cool. Isn't this fun? Two paddles, two PDFs. PDFs? Personal flotation device. PFDs. That just PFDs. PFDs, not PDFs. <laughs> and we get a butt cushion, which is mine. You didn't pick that up. You said I get the butt cushion. Oh, no fair. Rock, paper, scissors? Oh. I win. <laughs> it's almost 3 p.m. <sighs> what a day it's been. All right, let's get our stuff in it. Can we go yet? Somebody else is setting out on a voyage too. <laughs> Farewell, little friend. Bon voyage. The departure is as ever an impressive spectacle. La, 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 la. From where I sit, I can count full 50 great canoes advancing upon the waters, the voyageurs singing out lustily as they contend for the lead. Before this trip is over, we shall have traveled full 1,800 miles up river and down, past many a dangerous rapide. And away we go, off to explore our nation's 36th national park. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and just for the record, it is 4 p.m., so let's see how long it takes us to do six miles. I do have a very good feeling that we aren't gonna go straight there, though. I think there's gonna be some exploring on the way, but we'll see. A lot of water passages, a lot of islands to be seen out here. By the mid-1800s, the voyagers disappeared when wool and silk replaced beaver pelts in hat making. And as time passed, loggers and miners threatened to destroy the area. But luckily, in 1975, a local conservationist, along with Congress, designated a 56-mile-long stretch of the Voyager's historic route and shoreline as a national park, which we're lucky enough to be exploring along with you folks. You know which way you're taking us? How do we navigate on this water? We use our sundial. <laughs> you guys see the shadow? You are taking us north. We need to go west that way. One thing that's a little bit disappointing about these waters is there actually can be power boats. A lot of people compare Voyagers National Park to the Boundary Waters, which the Boundary Waters do not allow anything with motors. And they're just something a little bit more special when you can only get places using human motion and human power, whether it's by foot, paddle, swimming. I don't know what other 
ways there are, but there's just something about that. So these waters are great, but you still gotta listen to the water crash. Like you can hear the one back in the distance. I mean, we own a motorcycle, so we love motors for certain things, but they're just something that's so nice about getting away from it all. This way. Wow. Like I'm watching planet Earth. Over 240 different bird species have been identified here, and 68 of them being species of greatest conservation concern. And as the birds know, it's also known for its world-class fishing, which helps explain why all the boaters love it here too. See ya, buddy. Row, row, row your boat gently down the lake. I don't think we're making it at any pace of those voyagers. <laughs> There were seven of them just motoring and powering along. <laughs> as far as wind and currents are concerned, this is pretty ideal. This is about as flat as it possibly ever could get on this lake. I think the wind is slightly blowing us in the direction of camp. Bit of a southeasterly. For anyone planning on heading out on a canoeing adventure with their significant other, we were taught to paddle on opposite sides. So I stick to the left and Drew stays on the right. I got some French songs up my sleeves, even though I'm not wearing sleeves. Oh, hey, oh, hey, my that one has a good beat for paddling. We've parked up on this little island. Andrew wanted to check out the map. We need a little closer uh, zoomed in version than this. Holy moly. I think we gotta go more right, actually. I wonder how far we've gone. <laughs> Not very good at knowing uh, those details like hiking. Is there a sign? Welcome to, what's the name of our camp? Welcome to Windigo. You have arrived. Did our canoe tell us that? I don't think so. I do have a really good map on my phone, so that's what we're gonna look at. Can you even see that? We need to cruise through these islands, up by Ash River, up to the bay, where Windigo K35 camp spot is. Awaiting our arrival. Did we tell you guys we're having lobster for dinner? <laughs> I know this seems really random for a telephone call to happen right now, but somebody that we met who was super kind on Isle Royale offered to let us park Spirit at his house while we go to Europe for three months. We are out in the middle of a lake in Voyagers National Park. You guys did go to Voyagers. We did. We're literally in our canoe in the middle of Lake Cab. <laughs> Home is on the horizon somewhere out there. I mean, this is a really tricky part. Just trying to find your campsite on the water. There's not like a flag blowing, you know? It's fun though. It's very unique. Can you guys see that? Sacre bleu. I think we've made it. This is our tent pad right here. And if you guys want to join us, we have an extra spare room right there. It is such a magnificent temperature evening. This is splendid. Hey buddy. Hey, you come all the way up here. Oh my gosh, right here. He's coming over for dinner. You coming in for dinner? Well, I'm pretty sure he's gonna like crawl on my foot. I think he knows all about this camp spot. Look at how pretty. Our boat's nice. Gotta clear away some of the algae to wash my face. Ready to stick your hand under? Straight down in there. Little lobster? Yeah.
That's crazy. I gotta lean in. I'm going in. Under the sea. Under the sea. That's a crawdad. He's so cute. But it looks just like my lobster. Aww. There's dinner. Just kidding. This is our dinner. How fancy are we tonight? I will be having more of a salad in a bag situation. I also got some rice noodles here that I can boil up. Or do some corn on the cob on the grill. And actually cooking lobster tail is a lot simpler than we originally thought. You just use some scissors, cut through the shell, grab a skewer, skewer it through the meat so that the tail doesn't curl up while it's being grilled. Guys, I literally can't watch this. Dude. I cannot. Slather on olive oil or avocado oil, salt. In five minutes, it's done. Whoa, they're so red. Oh, they're beautiful. Those are great. Listen to that sizzle. Whoa. We've been low to 40 40s. national parks? I would say low 40s, yeah. Wow. Well, this is a very special occasion because this is our last adventure before going to Europe. Being here is reminding us to be present amidst so much change that is coming. Last year presented a little bit of a timeout, a hiatus, and this year we are gonna make forward progress. In my bowl, a little less exciting, but all you need is a little bit of coconut aminos and we have a side of beans to share. Ooh, there is still a corn in there. Got a corn. Can you see that? That's Kettle Falls. That actually bridges the gap between the US and Canada. We were looking at our map in our tent. It's a little dark in here. <laughs> it's pretty crazy to think that the Voyager's pathways through these waters are what defined the border between the US and Canada. Canada, USA. Wow. We have a marshmallow. Lick it. And then I dip it. Ooh, brilliant. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Right in here. Four in the morning, I heard something clunking around. And so I got up, grabbed my headlamp, and our canoe had swung all the way around. It was banging on the rocks. Oh, wow. Because the wind changed direction. So our canoe was like perpendicular to the dock. Can you imagine like if we lost our boat? Oh my gosh, no. And so I ended up pulling the whole canoe onto the dock. Thank you for saving our boat. And I see there's the canoe now. Crazy. Was it heavy to drag up there? It wasn't as heavy as I thought. We almost got a full bottle here. Oh, it's great. Pumping away. This is our backpack water filtration system. You just gotta find a body of water and do some pumping. He's ready. You know what that means. I wonder if the Voyagers had harmonicas or musical instruments. I think they have banjos and drums. I can't believe they didn't have coffee. They drank spirits in the morning. I think they drank spirits regularly. <laughs> I think you're right. Many times a day. Leave it to those French Canadians to show up and have a good time and party and paddle <laughs> party and paddle and party <laughs> and paddle <laughs> i'm just really glad it didn't rain on us last night the weather forecast has been like questionable this whole time perfect cheers there is a cool breeze coming this way this might be the calm before the storm all right captain so we are where just south of the canadian border <laughs> That's true. And we are in this little nook right in here. One of the things that many people talk about is the Ellsworth Rock Gardens. Where a guy sculpted all kinds of rocks into these really cool creative structures and I guess creatures. The wind is blowing a bit out of the south today, coming up like this. And we need to go 
that away. We one could either go directly more through these islands back to where we started or we could kind of take a voyage over this direction and then cut back which this would be a major side wind coming into us when we go to make that and we don't know how the weather's going to look later. It's looking a bit unpredictable on the forecast. We definitely don't want to get stuck out in the middle of the lake in an aluminum canoe if there's lightning. Ooh, that's true. Let's get our boat. It's time to go explore the wild blue yonder again. Let's see how far we go. We do have a headwind. Merrily, 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 light the bud of green. Row, row the boat down the lake. The wind's a blowing. We got some chop at our side. Trying to take a little break to look at the weather app. It says 3 p.m lightning and thunderstorms, but that's only what percentage? 60 and 70%. Right now it's hard to judge because we're in this cozy nook where it's nice and calm and yeah. refuge for swimming. That storm might be coming a little quicker than we anticipated. You see that guys? That looks real dark. And we just started to hear some thunder. And now all of the fishermen that have been out have sort of started to dissipate. Dark sky, not so scary sky. Oh, this is a tough decision to make, but I think we need to beeline back for the port. Come back for me. I think this is a good choice. Yeah, I do too now. The way that that makes me feel inside is very unsettling, so yeah. If only Google Maps had the canoe speed that they could show us, you know? Yeah. Uh. I know we never like missing out on an adventure, but don't want to be stuck out here in a lightning and thunderstorm. We haven't seen anybody else out here canoeing or kayaking or supping or doing anything remotely to what we are doing. All we see is fishermen and power boats. That's so true. So if that's an indicator. Is it the weather that's doing that or uh, is that just how it is? Or are we just crazy? I don't know, but that looks darker and darker. Yeah. So, okay, gotta put you guys down now. Time for us to boogie. We only have one dry bag and a backpack ring cover. So we're kind of like hybrid waterproof right now. And we're also planning for an international voyage. So let's not add to our list of things to do before we go. Well, things will dry, things will dry. <laughs> they always do. Yes, regardless. listening to thunder coming in from over here. The sound of lots of boats come. Oh, there was lightning. Holy smokes. I just wanted to show you we're nearly back. Can you see there? It's still a 15 minute paddle. That was a big lightning bolt. I sure am glad we made the decision to come back. You and I can weather any storm. Drew just went to go get the van and the people who rented us the canoe came up to us right as we came to shore and they were like, we are so glad you guys came off the water. We have a huge glob of weather coming our way and it's not gonna be good for anyone out there. So, goodness. I'm really glad that we felt it in our gut to come back and look. Ah, thank goodness. Let me give you a hand. Ah, oh, thank you. <laughs> Another hour out there, and I don't think we would have been okay. I know, look at that sky. <laughs> we would be hiding out on an island. I just feel so lucky to be back. I mean, this perfectly and be back. Oh my goodness. It is raining so hard out here, babe. Oh I'm freaking soaked. I might need to shower first. Oh. Oh. 
Oh. <laughs> like a wet dog. Don't forget to subscribe and join us as our international voyage to Greece and beyond begins.